Hey guys, instead of doing a short for my review of episode 6 of season 16 of Criminal Minds True Conviction, I needed to do it in a video because I have a little bit more to say about this one. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it before you watch this because I'm going to drop some big spoilers because... There are some things that happened in this episode that I just need to talk about. The first being the weird flashbacky thing towards the beginning. Of course, at the beginning, we find out that they have a new jet. We find out that JJ and Luke did not get hurt in the explosion. And, you know, I'm surprised JJ can still hear as many times as she has been blown up. Um, the weird flashbacky thing, it didn't look like a flashback. You know, a lot of times on TV shows, you see a flashback and you know immediately. Like, it's super obvious. And I think the reason why they didn't make it super obvious this time was because they kind of wanted us to put the pieces together ourselves, which is kind of a staple of Criminal Minds. It's a thinking show, and that's probably one of the reasons why I like it so much. They don't spoon-feed us stuff. So, the flashback that didn't look like a flashback kind of tells you how Elias became what he became. And if you remember in a couple of episodes ago, he saw like a vision of a man and they were talking about rules. And that was very obvious that it was a vision. So I actually assumed that that was his dead father, but it wasn't. So when I saw this flashback, I was like, oh, wait, this is a real man? And what he does is he knocks this little boy out. He clotheslines him while he's running and knocks him out and kidnaps him. And then when he gets the boy home, he tells him, your parents are dead. I'm your only living relative and you're going to be living with me now. Well, that's not how that works, y'all. You're not allowed to do that. You you have to go through the court system and, and prove that you're a fit caretaker and sign all the paperwork and all that stuff. You can't just kidnap him and say, okay, I'm your only living relative, so now you gotta stay with me. I'm even wondering if his parents were really dead and if this guy is really his uncle. But now we know his origin story. The most shocking thing of the episode. Okay, if you guys remember back to me talking about how excited I was for the reboot and how excited I was when I found out that Garcia would be back and Luke would be back, I said, yay, because I'm so shipping them. Well, when Luke, in the first episode of season 16, when Luke interrupted her baking group. One of her friends asked about Luke, and Garcia said, oh, no, 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 we went on one date, just one date. So I don't know what happened on that date, but apparently they're not a good fit for each other, and they still have a little bit of the antagonism that they had after Derek first left. Yet, they still have that cute little friendship banner kind of a thing going. And I guess I'm going to have to just be satisfied with that. Because Tyler, the informant that pulled her back into the FBI that she was so mad at, she actually kissed him. They had a near-miss moment. You know, like when... You're talking to somebody, and then you start to stare at them, and then you just kind of lean in, and it just kind of happens. Well, 
Garcia leaned in and went, Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> so they went for a walk. And the night that Tyler's sister disappeared, he was supposed to meet her out in front of the restaurant where she worked. And they accidentally, when they went on their walk, they accidentally passed that restaurant. And Garcia said, oh, I'm sorry, this is where your sister worked and disappeared from, right? And he goes, yeah, it's okay. And she looked at the street sign and it said Oak Street. And she said, oh, oh, I have to go back to the office. And she hailed a taxi, and then she ran up to him and kissed him. And I was like, no. Part of me, though, she's had so much heartache with her love life. So it would be really cool. And I like Tyler. I wouldn't mind seeing Tyler on a regular basis. The other thing that I want to talk about that happened is Tara and her girlfriend, Rebecca, broke up. But it was such a BS reason for them to break up. A woman was killed, and a man was convicted for her murder, and Rebecca was the attorney on that case. She was a prosecuting attorney, and it made her career. And now she works for the DOJ. So... She doesn't want this conviction overturned, but the team has found out that the man was innocent. And Rebecca would rather let an innocent man be executed than do the right thing. Because it's going to come back on her. So, Tara told her he didn't do it. This is our evidence. Please call the governor and get a stay of execution. And she did. But now she's being investigated. And I think that's so stupid because just because an innocent man was accidentally convicted does not mean that you did anything improper. You present your evidence to the jury and the jury decides guilty or not guilty. So... She didn't have to do anything improper for him to get convicted. So she's taking it out on Tara. And I'm pretty mad at her right now. Because attorneys have a saying. It's better for 10 guilty men to go free than for one innocent man to go to prison. And I don't think a real attorney... You know I always say I'm not a lawyer, I'm a nurse. So, if there's any attorneys watching this, let me know what you think. Do you think that's legit? Like, would she automatically be investigated because she accidentally convicted an innocent man? Or am I way off base here? So, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, and lastly, at the end of the episode, Elias's uncle is still alive. And I assumed he was dead. Because of the vision that he saw. I actually thought he was his dead father. He's his uncle and he's still alive. So Elias goes to his cabin. And he's sitting there. He has a, um, his uncle has an IV in his hand. And they're arguing. And he said, you made me what I am. And he's accusing, accusing his uncle on causing him to be a serial killer. He's like, I got away, I got educated, I got a good job, I got married, I got kids, but I still do it because you turned me into this. And he told them that he was going to be dead soon because he put naproxen in his IV. And at first I was like, wait, what? What? Who kills somebody with naproxen? Naproxen is a leave. It is an over-the-counter medication. It's an anti-inflammatory medication. It does not come in IV form. You cannot give naproxen IV. You can give other kinds of anti-inflammatories IV. Toradol is the most common one, or at least it was when I was a nurse. I've put Toradol in many, many IVs, but never naproxen. It does come in an oral suspension for people that can't take pills. So he could have injected the IV with the oral suspension, 
And it does come in an injectable form, but it has to be injected into a muscle. And I've never injected it into a muscle. I've always only ever injected Toradol. But I did look it up and double check because it's been a while since I was a nurse. And it doesn't come IV. And it's not given an injectable form except into the muscle. And I was thinking, why did he use naproxen of all things? There are some over-the-counter medications that if you OD on them, you will die, but you will die a slow, torturous death because some medications, an overdose of that will only affect the organ in your body that it's filtered through. And I was like, well, he could have used epinephrine. That could have made him have a heart attack. He could have used potassium chloride. That would have made him have a heart attack. He could have used insulin. That would have dropped his blood sugar and killed him. So there were other ways, easier ways, and non-traceable ways to do it. But he used naproxen. But then he said that his uncle was in kidney failure and that's when it clicked there are certain drugs that are filtered through your kidneys and anti-inflammatories are one of them because that is a big no-no you do not give those medications to a kidney patient so that's what he did he somehow got a hold either of an injectable form of naproxen or the oral suspension and put it in his iv now, he did not die in this episode, so we don't know yet if that's actually going to kill him. Those those are my thoughts on this episode. Four things, the, the weird flashback, Garcia and Tyler, Tara and Rebecca, and the death by naproxen. So let me know what you think down in the comments. It was a very good episode. I don't think it was as good as the last episode. I extremely, extremely enjoyed the last episode. So that's it. And just real quick, I just wanted to tell you guys my thoughts and get you guys to tell me some of your thoughts. And Monday, don't forget, one of my main episodes will drop and it is Fisher King Part 2, which is the first episode of Season two of criminal minds so look for it monday at six and i will see you next time bye